So we're going to be looking at uh, Matthew Expert. Now, to try and summarise Matthew Expert in 45 minutes is a real challenge. So I'm going to whisk through really, really quickly. So I apologise from the off that I'm going to be speaking um, a lot and quickly. Um, and I'm using the keynote, which I again I apologise for. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Thank you. Okay. So, we'll just wait for this. so uh, this is Manager the Expert. This is going on in the classroom, and it's a magic inquiry approach to uh, teaching and learning. Um, I'm going to start off by looking at a couple of quotes um, about storytelling and the role of storytelling in learning. Story uh, and stories <coughs> are medium for learning. This is a quote from Daniel Willingham, um, who we tend to get quoted a lot in current education. But this is something that people tend to ignore in Willingham's work, which is that stories are what he calls psychologically privileged. that the meaning is treated differently in the memory than other types of material. Now I tweeted him about that a couple of times actually, and he's never really told me what he means, because that's, that's a, an astonishing claim actually. If, if the material is treated differently in the brain, so what does that mean? What does it mean being treated differently in the brain? What's going on? And I'm not really sure that he knows the answer to that. They know that it does, but they're not really sure how. So this is a quote from Hirsch. And Hirsch is usually quoted um, for his uh, advocation of a knowledge-based curriculum. And the knowledge deficit is the book that he's most famous for. But this is a quote from Hirsch, which is that stories are the best vehicle for teaching young children idea that was already ancient was Plato's. This is uh, from Kieran Egan. There's a fantastic book by Kieran Egan called Teaching and Storytelling. It's uh, well known in America, but not terribly well known in this country. Has anybody read Teaching and Storytelling? Yes, I highly recommend it. It's a really, really great read. Um, and what, he, what, what Egan does is he, he runs big conferences. He actually works in Canada at Simon Fraser University in Canada. And there's a big conference, year con yearly conference. He runs about 15 years on imagination in learning. And he, he makes the case that imagination is not researched very much. And the reason he thinks for that in education is, not, is because it's very difficult to get hold of, very difficult to grasp what it is, what actually imagination is and how it works in learning. But as most people in the field of education, academics, uh, seem to all agree that imagination plays a big part in learning and stories are effectively in learning, but they're not really sure how it works or indeed how to exploit that. And Egan's book, Teaching Storytelling, is fantastic on the why of imagination. But when the second half of the book, he, he starts talking about the how, the teaching of it. And he's not good at that. He's a great academic, but not a terribly good teacher. And for that, I think the best person to turn to is Dorothy Hepburn. Have, you, have, you, have people heard of Dorothy Hepburn? Yeah, yeah. She's from this part of the world, isn't she? Just up the road. Um, there's Dorothy Hepburn at work with the kids. And she died. Uh, two or three years ago, but was an absolutely phenomenal teacher and very, very famous in her time. 